your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy, SD. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Thanks for tapping in. Go ahead and hit that like button before we get started. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the notification bell so you're notified when this content drops. Toasters, it's good to be back. You hadn't heard from me in a while. Had a slight health scare, but I'm back, back working, getting better. And uh, hey, man, I'm just going to be transparent with you. Maybe two weeks ago, I started having problems with the tooth, uh, one of the back teeth. And I was just going to, you know, deal with it. You know, I knew I needed to get this tooth fixed maybe a year ago. I knew I did, but procrastinated and I uh, just started having major pain with it. But it would subside, it would go away and come back, back and forth. But uh, I figured that, you know, it would eventually subside altogether, right? No, that didn't happen. So I started feeling sick. And uh, man, like diarrhea, queasy stomach, uh, fatigue, chronic fatigue, man. Uh, what else? Headaches, uh, vision blur, uh, brain fog. Yeah, I was, I was going through it, but I was still able to function kind of, you know, uh, I was still able to work, still able to drive and, and just, you know, get through it. And so, you know, I really didn't think that another thought maybe I was coming down with something, but then I didn't have a cough. Uh, I wasn't sneezing, you know, I had the sniffles, you know, kind of a runny nose slightly, but nothing major. So I was like, man, do I have a flu? Do I have pneumonia? I just couldn't really peg it. So I have a trip coming up and I was like, well, man, should I go get seen for this trip? And I probably wouldn't have gone to the doctor or to the dentist, as it turns out, but I got a bump on my gums where the tooth was aching. There was a bump, an abscess. So I was like, oh, hell no, I gotta go to the doctor. I gotta go to the dentist. Called into my dentist, emergency, you know, <clears throat> emergency appointment. Got me in the next day, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, man, this is a, this is an abscess." He said, "You've been feeling like you've been feeling because it's been poisoning your body." He said, "Man, if you had waited any longer, you'd be in ER, and you possibly, you know, could be dead. This was this was severe." And so the tooth I had a tooth had a crown on, I believe, or filling, uh, maybe a filling had cracked and it became uh, infected. And so it was poisoning my body, I had no idea. And so uh, he pulled the tooth out, you know, numbed me up real good, put me up under the gas, pulled it, and uh, sent me on my way uh, with a prescription for antibiotics and painkillers, uh, uh, with amoxicillin and, and ibuprofen and uh, hydrocodone. <clears throat> so I don't take the hydrocodone. It's too strong for me. But I take the amoxicillin, of course, antibiotic, and I take the ibuprofen. And uh, that happened Friday. So today is Tuesday, and i uh, feeling much better. Go on my trip Saturday. And uh, so just think, man, if I had gone on that trip this coming Saturday, and this had happened, or worse, man, that, that's, that's just it's been bad, really bad. So. Listen to your body. Don't play around and uh, jump ahead of it, man. You know, jump ahead of it. Be proactive, be progressive, and uh, get some insurance too. Yeah, get some insurance. It's a blessing. I've always had insurance, so it wasn't as much as it could have been. But uh, yeah, it's a blessing though. So yeah, take care of yourself, man. Health is wealth. Remember that. Man, there's a lot going on today, uh, this week, you know, uh, I want to touch on it. And I want to touch on this thing from a different angle, maybe objectively, 360 angle, that's what I do. And this is the Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese situation. Now, Caitlin Clark plays for the Iowa Hawkeyes uh, basketball team. Angel Reese plays for LSU. Tigers basketball team, 
They met in the women's NCAA Women's Championship game. LSU beats Iowa. And, uh, yeah, that's what that was, man. It was a good – well, I don't want to say it was a good game. It, it, it was a competitive game. But uh, no time during that game that I think Iowa was going to win. Uh, LSU just had control the entire game. Even when Iowa made a, a slight run, LSU – Got their thing back in check. So they just have a superior team. Now, the best player from either team is Kate McClark, hands down. Um, and that's saying a lot because uh, LSU has some great players too, but Kate McClark is just on another level. And so, uh, you know, shouts out to, to LSU. Congratulations. And uh, yeah, congratulations to Iowa, but they are the losers. Uh, but, uh, I, I had really no, no dog in the fight. I was just wanted a good competitive game, and that's what we got. But towards the end of the game, Angel Reese does the hand motion in front of the face. You know it. And uh, I just want to give you a bit of history, a bit of history on that. You know, people are saying she got that from John Cena, uh, the wrestler, actor John Cena. But actually, John Cena got it from uh, the rapper and 50 Cent's friend and sidekick, Tony Yayo. Now, Tony Yayo got it from Flavor Flav. That's the first person I saw do that. This here was Flavor Flav back in the 80s. And so uh, just a bit of history there. So the originator is Flavor Flav, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, so I go way back. So that's who I first saw do it. It wasn't John Cena. Okay, he got it from Tony Yayo. Tony Yayo. Tony Yayo got it from Flavor Flav. Now, Andrew Reese does this towards the end of the game, and, and kind of in close proximity to Caitlin Clark. Uh, maybe too close for comfort, and she was showboating. This is a bit of trash talking, a form of trash talking, and people, not people. Mostly white people were in uproar. They were, they were in uproar. They said uh, all kinds of things. She's ghetto. Uh, Keith Oberman, uh, former ESPN analyst or commentator, said she's classless. Uh, Dave, uh, I think his name, Dave Portner, uh, from, uh, from uh, Barstool Sports, called her a POS, a piece of you know what. And I'm like, man, why are these people uh, so passionate, you know, about this, you know? But to give a little history, Caitlin Clark had done the same motion uh, a game or two prior. She'd done the same thing. Caitlin Clark is known to be a trash talker. Caitlin Clark, you can say, is very disrespectful uh, on the court. You know, she even kind of brushed off an open person, I won't say open man, an open woman, open player who was at the three-point line. She did this to her, meaning you can have that. You got to prove it to me that you can make that. You're not a threat. I'm all good with that. I used to do that. People used to do it to me. Prove it to me. Prove you can make it. It's, it's part of the game. It's trash talking. And... Nobody said anything. She's known for trash talking. She's, she did this to head motion too. No one said anything. Uh, she even got into it a little bumping, a little back and forth with a young lady uh, in one of the games, after one of the games, when you go shake hands after the games, when the Lions are going past each other shaking hands after the game. Uh, there's some trash talking there. No one said anything. You know, she was uh, adorned with the words uh, tough, competitor, you know, uh, those types of things. You know, they, uh, they were embraced. She was embraced. Her personality was embraced. But when Angel Reese did it, white people, not all, even though I shouldn't have to preface it with that, but white people had an issue with that. And, uh, why? You got to ask yourself why. You know, I think on the surface, we know it's a race base. Uh, we don't get treated 
the same or get the same passes as whites. We just don't. For grown men, we call a young lady, it's really a girl now, really a child. I know she plays college balls, she's a child. They call her classless. They call her a piece of S. Was out of bounds. And it just goes to show you that this society treats blacks as grown-ups, as men and women, even when we're actually children. That's been going on for a while. You know, uh, our children don't get treated like children in this society. They get treated like adults. And uh, it's something, you know, we gotta push to change. It's something we also, in the meantime, have to adapt to, maneuver around, get smart with, understand, you know, what's going on, and move accordingly. So we need people doing it all. We need people rising up, moving accordingly. But we need people also fighting for change and pushing against that concept, against that mindset. So we need it all. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what's happening. But I found out that when something, we'll just take sports. When sports, a particular sport is dominated by blacks, and then you get a white person that's really good. People call it the great white hype or the great white hope. But you get one of those white people that are pretty good that comes along, a Larry Bird or a Caitlin Clark. Um, white people, the majority of white people really champion that person, get behind that person. And I think either consciously or subconsciously, I don't know, all right? I haven't had this discussion with any whites. But I think something inside of them is saying, yeah, we got us one. Stick it to them. Stick it to them. And if they're not literally saying that, verbally saying that, I think that's the energy. And so I think this is the case in this situation. You know, they were oblivious to what Caitlin Clark had done. But when Angel Reese did the same thing, the radars went off, the alarms went off. And they immediately attacked because our great white hope, our great white hype, well, we're gonna say hope because she's legit. A great white hope does deserve this. She's held herself in the class act, as a class act. And you're being ghetto, you're being classless, you're being a POS, which is far from the truth, which is an incorrect narrative. These are two young ladies that are competitive, that are good, that trash talk. And that's part of the sport. It should have nothing to do with race. People trash talk. Larry Bird, a white guy, is considered one of the best trash talkers. And he was in a black dominated sport, basketball, the NBA. Even in his time, it was still dominated. I think it had just begun to be dominated by blacks. And he would trash talk blacks, whites, whoever. He said it was disrespectful for a white guy to guard him. He said no white guy can guard him. You have to put a brother on him. He told Isaiah Thomas this. He said it's disrespectful. No white guy can guard him. Ultimate trash talker. Ultimate trash talker. So, uh, that's part of the game. People trash talk. So I don't think the problem is Caitlin Clark. I don't think the problem is Angel Reese. I think the problem is society. Society. And just looking at this objectively and being fair, Black people do the same thing. Anytime we get a black person to infiltrate or to dominate in a white dominated sport, we do the same thing. We do the same thing. Serena Williams, Venus Williams, Tiger Woods. We do the same thing. No telling what was going on when we infiltrated baseball, you know, what was said or the sentiments or the spirit, you know, we do the same thing, like, like stick it to them, like, keep
kick that white ass. We do the same thing. I see on TikTok often where <clears throat> it's this girl, man, I can't even remember her, I don't know her name, but young girl, uh, a, a child, man, she can't be any more than eight, eight, seven, six, seven, eight years old. And she wrestles, a uh, young black girl. And she kicks butt. And most of the people she's facing, most of the kids she's facing are white. Of course, because it's a, a white dominated sport, you know, uh, wrestling. And she whips their tail, man. And so I like to go to the comments to see what's going on, see what the energy is. And you see a lot of this, you go ahead sister, black power, uh, uh, black girl magic. And you can just feel the energy that they're really getting off of this black girl whooping some white tail. And so I think we all do it. And I'm saying, I'm not saying every person, but I'm saying every race does it. And so, man, if we want things to change, we got to project, we got to send out the energy we want to receive. All of us. So this is a society issue. It really is. Uh, and people know that the powers that be play on that. You got a Jill Biden, the, the president's wife, first lady, Jill Biden, says she wants Iowa to also visit the White House. Although Iowa lost, she wants them to visit the White House also. Why is that? Why is that? That's never been done. Where the loser gets to visit the White House. Is it because Iowa is majority of heavily white? Is it because the Iowa basketball team is majority white? Did Jill feel a way about these black girls beating these white girls? Did she feel a way? She was at the game. She saw everything. Or is she playing on our emotions? There is an election coming up. There is an Iowa caucus, which is a big deal. So is this a political move with some undertone race going on, racism going on, a racial uh, tension going on? But the overtone is political. I'm telling you, man, we got a wise hub. People are sitting back playing on us. And her husband, President Biden, he's the same guy who said, if you don't vote Democrat, you ain't black. They play on your emotion. And people constantly fall for it. When are the people, when are the people going to wake up and see what's going on? We got to stop the nonsense. We got to. You know, uh, the racial tension, the contrast, it makes good TV, it makes good media, brings in money because you got eyes and ears tuning in. But in the long run, what do we lose? What do we sacrifice? Peace and harmony, love. What do we sacrifice for superficial things? We gotta smarten up, man. We really do, we gotta smarten up. And uh, every man gotta hold himself accountable. Every man and woman gotta look themselves in the mirror and ask themselves, what am I bringing to society that's positive, that's pushing society forward in righteousness? What am I doing, what am I bringing? Or am I continually falling for the okie doke? Because we both do it. Black and white do it. Hispanics, Asians, everybody does it. Now, the black and white thing is highlighted because we have a long history, right, in America. But uh, everyone does it. And so uh, let's not move the goalposts. Let's not change the narrative. Let's not 
rearrange our principles based on if we like the person or not, or if the person looks like us or not. Let's stand on some sound principles, regardless of race. Man, let's get it together, people. As always, from me to you, love, peace.